Before we begin, this video will not cover the use of conduit or installation of grounding bushings. It's important to make sure you follow all national and local code requirements for your installation and include all code required equipment when installing this inverter in an actual installation. Welcome to this tutorial on how to install the Sunny TriPower X US-50 inverter, also known as the STPX. Mike Mahan, the technical trainer at SMA, will be doing the installation demonstration for the STPX. He goes over unboxing the STPX and key installation procedures like mounting the bracket, attaching the DC terminal cover, installing the AC DC cables, and more. To ensure a smooth installation process, gather the following tools shown here. Let's begin by unboxing the STPX. Upon opening the box, you have the mounting bracket and the accessories bag along with the manual. The accessories bag has these pieces of equipment for your installation. On the back cover of the installation manual, you will find a sticker displaying vital information such as the PIC and RID codes for Sunny Portal registration along with the password for the inverter's self-hosted Wi-Fi network. Now, let's move on to the inverter. To safely handle the inverter, it is recommended to use two people. Carefully lift the inverter from the box and place it securely in a designated area. The first installation we recommend doing is the ground bus bar. You will need a Torx 25 screwdriver and the two included M5 by 18 screws and washers. Begin by inserting the washers through the screws and secure the screws to the inverter with a Torx 25 screwdriver. For ease of installation, lay the STPX flat, such as on a table, and proceed to install the ground bus bar on the bottom left of the inverter and tighten to 35 inch pounds, just like so. Let's move on to the mounting bracket. Review the installation manual and quick reference guide for approved mounting orientations and environmental conditions. Level the mounting bracket on your chosen surface and secure it using the hardware appropriate for the mounting surface and weight of the inverter. With the assistance of two people, hang the inverter on the mounted bracket. Ensure the clips on both sides of the inverter body slide securely into the slots on each side of the bracket. Using a torque spec of 13.3 inch pounds, secure the inverter to the bracket using the two included M5 by 14 screws on each side. Let's review how to install the optional DC terminal cover accessory. The DC terminal cover accessory is used to cover the DC cables. The accessory comes with the quick install guide, the DC terminal cover, the lid, and the screws. The four M5 by 14 screws are used to attach the DC terminal cover to the body of the inverter, while the three M6 by 20 screws are used to secure the lid. With a torque spec of 35 inch pounds, Attach the DC terminal cover securely using the four M5 by 14 screws. The DC terminal cover has designated spots for drilling conduit attachment holes. Choose an approved spot and drill the holes carefully. Remember to deburr the holes afterward to remove any rough edges. Let's go through the steps to connect the AC terminal cables. Begin by ensuring the DC disconnect is in the off position. If you're using a lockout tagout lock, please attach it now. Gently remove the inverter front cover by unscrewing the 10 Torx 25 screws. Set the lid and screws aside and look inside the inverter. Inside, you will find the AC terminals on the right side, the comms and IO plugs in the middle, along with the pin plug for attaching accessory cards. Here is where you attach the optional SPD kit. Start by removing the tape covering the one inch trade size knockout located below the AC terminals. To connect the AC conductors, strip back 3 fourths of an inch of the insulation of the wires AWG6 or AWG8 and insert the ground conductor into the terminal with the ground symbol and securely close the lever. Proceed to insert the L1, L2, and L3 conductors into the respective terminals, ensuring a secure seating for each. Then insert the neutral conductor into the appropriate terminal. During the installation, 
it's important to connect the inverter only to a 277 480 volt grounded wire service. Note that the inverter utilizes the neutral conductor for phase measurement and instrumentation purposes only, and the neutral is not considered a current carrying conductor while in operation. If you choose not to use a neutral conductor, you must install the neutral ground jumper. Lift both the neutral and ground levers, insert the jumper, and close the neutral lever. Insert the ground conductor into the terminal, mark with the ground symbol, and securely close the lever. Proceed to insert the L1, L2, and L3 conductors into the respective terminals, ensuring a secure seating for each. If you need to measure the AC conductor's voltage, use the multimeter contact point here. Please refer to the installation manual for detailed wiring descriptions of the I.O. plug and multifunction relay, even if they are not currently in use. It is recommended to insert the plugs into the respective ports for future use. Connect your communications and I.O. cables using the two 1-inch knockouts in the comms area. For SMA speed wire communications, use at a minimum Cat5 shielded cabling. Attach a ferrite to each cable. To secure the lid, first insert the upper left and lower right screws and tighten them securely by hand. To ensure proper fastening, use a torque specification of 53 inch pounds to secure the lid screws. If you are installing multiple inverters, ensure that you are using the correct lid for each individual inverter. For best practice, scan the QR code on the lid and compare the inverter serial number located on the right side of the STPX. The final installation are the DC cables. Let's review those steps. The DC home run cables must be prepared with the included amphino connectors and ferrules. Strip off 0.28 inches of insulation from all conductors. Using the correct amphino crimping tool, crimp the cold formed contacts on the conductors. Make sure to match the contact to the right connector as shown here. Remove the nut off the connector, slide the nut into your conductor, ensuring that the plastic connector clicks into place and then hand twist the nut. Then use the H4 wrench tool to fully secure the connector. Repeat this step for your other connector and duplicate for all other strings being connected to the STPX. Now it's time to connect the home run cables to the inverter bulkhead terminals. Start by connecting the equipment grounding conductor to the ground bus bar. Notice the connector locations here. You have three MPPT channel inputs with two string connections for each, labeled A, B, and C. The connectors to the left are positive, while the connectors to the right are negative. Before connecting the home run cables, check the polarity of each cable. Connect your home run cables to the inverter bulkhead terminals. And then cover all unused bulkhead connectors with the provided sealing caps. If you have the DC terminal cover accessory, place the lid back on and attach it using the three lid bolts using a torque spec of 35 inch pound. Congratulations! This concludes the installation process for the Sunny Tri Power X. Please visit our website at sma-america.com for additional resources.